flying in the top two antennas only. And bingo, the band's wide open and everybody's 20 over 9. Switch to the bottom two, not hear anything, only noise. Go to all four and hear very little. Oh hi, welcome to my shack. But don't worry, today's video is not a review about virtual reality. It's about ham radio. But maybe in the future, we'll be able to operate a virtual shack. We'll see. Well, today's video is about the Colibri Nano from Expert Electronics. This is a small SDR receiver and it is all in full metal and it has some very cool feature. Well, when you look at SDR receiver uh, and you compare a manufacturer, they all have different option of software. What I mean is that companies that develop their own software, it's pretty interesting to see how it interacts with their products and what you can do with it. And that's the case of the Calibri Nano. And I have to admit that I'm quite impressed by this little thing. First, it does a really great job, but it has a very, very cool feature that I really, really like, which is the remote use of this receiver. I mean, with almost anything. You can actually listen to radio using this at a distance on any device and any platform. Even though if it's an iPhone, Android, a PC, whatever, it uses an HTML5 server installed on a Raspberry Pi tree. And that's the Raspberry Pi that I built in my previous video. So if you want to take a look at it, just click on the card right here. But that's what I use. But you know what? I will let you try it. So stay tuned because at the end of this video, you will have a link where you can actually try this unit from a distance on my antenna. So stay tuned for a little bit more detail about this. But let's start with this review. For more technical specification about the Colibri Nano, please visit nsiradio.com, your North American distributor, or the manufacturer website at eesdr.com. And if you go on that website, just look for the receiver in the receiver section and go for the Colibri Nano receiver. Important to select the right one and you will have more information uh, about the product, the minimum requirements as a system. You also have uh, a little bit more detail about the technical behind it. And you also have an information about the remote server that it can be used with a Raspberry Pi that I will demonstrate later on. And if you go in the software section, you have all the software you can download, the Expert SDR2 software. Just make sure you download the version for the Colibri Nano. That is very important. And you if you want to have the server option with the Raspberry Pi, it's over there as well. You have an image and you have the manual as well for that. There is actually three way you can use your Calibri Nano. The first one it's with the expert SDR2 local software. That's mean you connect the receiver uh, onto a PC, install this software and you can uh, you're you're on. It should detect it automatically. And for a start you can just click on the screen to select a frequency. And uh, you can fine tune using your mouse as I'm doing right now. There you go. You have most of the feature on top there. You have a mixer when you can have separate volume for the VFO A and B. You also have a receive EQ you can enable from up here and also down there. And if you unclick it, it will disappear. Okay. Then when you select a frequency, fine tune again, it's not always uh, right on when you click. 
depending if you're zooming or not. You can actually enlarge the receiving frequency of audio. So you can go up to 10 kilohertz as a filter, sorry. And you have all the other preset here that you can select quickly, as you can see, just change. And you can have a sub VFO as well, since you have two volume air, that's why I open it up. So now you can hear the sub receiver. If you're in the sub receiver, let's say you're on 40 meter and the span is not wide enough to see the second frequency, you won't see it on the screen, but you will hear it. But now both VFO are on 20 meters. So if you enlarge one, it enlarge the other one. If you pre-select one, it pre-select the other one. You can turn it off by just checking for the sub-receiver. Okay, and you have the S-meter. You can see that I unselect everything. And then I'll bring it back. There you go. There is a few DSP functions like auto notch filter. You also uh, yeah, sometimes select a filter is the best way depending on the signal that you receive. You also have see hold on, okay, let's enlarge. It's pretty easy to operate. Very cool, actually. Just love it. You have all the modes here. You have all the bands here for the preset. Like here, just click on the band, it change, and the correct frequency. Uh, uh, sorry, correct mode follow. You can add a memory. If you check memory, you will have a column on the side like this. You can recall memory by just clicking on it. Okay, and if you change. VFO, let's say we'll go here, just to 212, and to add the memory, you just you can lock your VFO here, but you can save, you can save, and your memory will be there, and you can put a comment on it as well. You have been a roll audio beside, let's remove the RX EQ and add been a roll, make some effects, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I prefer without it, actually. It's, I, I've been working for a little while on this review and I had some bad luck with the con band condition. Every time I had some time, well, there was not too much uh, condition to do the review, so I did my best. Now I just activate the noise reduction. Worked pretty well, as you can see. Here, sorry. <laughs> So you can hear the difference. So the good thing about that time in the morning is you got a lot of zone trains, a lot of expresses. Noise banker one, noise banker two. Okay. It doesn't dist uh, change the audio much uh, when using the noise banker. Same another frequency. Okay, remove the memory so you have a larger span. You can also use the keypad here to enter the frequency directly on it. Okay. If you go in the option, you have the menu and you can change the span of the waterfall in the spectrum. Let's say 1.5 kilohertz. It goes up to uh, 3, uh, sorry, 3 megahertz. It's 1.5 megahertz. Let's go back to 384. There you go. So that is easy as well. You have in the menu uh, the device that has been selected. You have a few setup that you can do. The sound card, it's important to, to check the right one for your audio. You also have a display 4K. Uh, that is very important if you want to have a, a good size font using a 4K screen like I do. So that's a cool feature. And you have a little bit more config as well. It supports OmniRig, that is very important if you want to synchronize with your rig. And uh, this is very, very neat as well. You have a lot of cool feature that you can use and program. So if you like to customize things, this should be good for you. 
There you go. They say they will add some feature in the future, but the feature that you see here, maybe you don't know what it is. I didn't. So just download the manual on their website and you will see that it's very, very detailed and you will have all the information needed for those features, extra features if you're not used with the term. Uh, well, everything is described uh, in the manual, so that is very good. You also have some snapshot uh, of pictures telling you what it does, so it's pretty straightforward, and their manuals are very, very well done. Like I said, you can get all the software on their website. Another way to use it is remote. So there's two ways using it in remote. I have the Raspberry Pi server that I will show you right now, like the show on the diagram. The screen is an extra, it's not necessary. Uh, it's on screen saver right now, but it's just like a DOS type interface uh, in Linux. And this is my dedicated server that has a public IP uh, address uh, with a domain name right on it. So you can try it later on. The first thing is try it on a PC, okay? So it's HTML5, that's pretty cool. So you go on my address there, or if you have your own, well, your own address in your LAN or in your one if you permit it. And it's pretty straightforward. You can change BAN uh, like this. You can enlarge so you won't see your browser anymore. And it's very fluid. This is, you have all the BAN here. This is very, very neat. Actually, this is the most impressing feature on this unit is the stability of its server, its performance uh, that you get out of it. It works on, on a cell phone connection without any issue. And you have okay, just Michael, enough feature to enjoy it. And with the waterfall and spectrum, it's, it's pretty incredible. Okay, so I just enlarged the, wa the waterfall and the spectrum right now up to 384, as you can see here. This is the best that I saw okay, about a, a remote server and if it crash and you lose your connection you just reload your, your page and it's back there and you just connect again and it work. It's reset itself and it's, it's very resilient, it doesn't crash, it's very stable, it's been all up for me about a month and it's very very stable, I'm very very impressed with this feature. They say they will add more DSP feature in the future, uh, like uh, noise reduction and everything. But for now, that's it. But it's <laughs> just just now. It's just very, 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 very good. You have auto notch, noise blanker, and you can change the filter as well. Like this, you can even enlarge it. You can even go larger than 10k. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. You have all the modes and the band there as well click and fine-tune with the mouse that. that is very good you can also enter direct up. frequency if you click on the frequency now you can see it working on my iPhone sorry for the lightning and the brightness of this I was trying to capture the screen and just to show you the fluidity is very 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 neat and it, it, same thing as the PC interface works very good but that's not all you can also download the expert SDR2 remote software and this software Okay, the particularity of this software is that it looks very similar as the original software that you have on your PC, but you enter the server IP address here. You need to enter the IP address. So that I was showing you the static IP address for my server. And you select the Colibri Nano there when it detects it via the IP. And you have actually the same basics as you have into the web interface, but you also have uh, the look and feel of the software okay so in the future they will develop more uh, feature uh, DSP feature remotely you don't have the sub receiver and you see that all the features that are not available are the are gray out so but in the future I can we can expect maybe to have those added maybe for uh, for the LAN operation that will be good can also have about the same setup you don't have the 4k option oh, no. you don't have the 4k option in, in this version of software uh, so I needed to enlarge my font to be able to screen capture in 4k and you also have you can enable the cat command okay 
and you have an above the main feature of the local software so that is pretty neat so this is the coolest feature and you can also add memory in that uh, mode so that's pretty nice you will be able to try it out on my server very soon so this concludes this video but as promised the link below here will give you access to my server with the Colibri Nano on it okay and you will be able to listen and try it but that's not all because you can use it on any HTML5 platform on your iPhone whatever in a web browser using the link below vpn.laboanlink.ca or you can also install the remote software from Expert Electronic and enter the IP address which is 69.70.160.68 okay this IP address is linked to the vpn.laboanlink.ca but in the software remote software you can use it and actually use a little bit more function into the software that as on the HTML5 server. The good thing about the HTML5 server is that it works on everything. So that is make it very simple. So you can try it and uh, let me know what you think about that. Um, also, keep in mind that I only have one Calibri Nano and for now, it's only one user at a time. But in the future, there'll be more than one, okay? They say they're trying to, uh, to develop a, a slave option so you can listen actually to the prime person that was connected first, what it's doing. At least that's my understanding. So that will come in the future and the server will be also available uh, into uh, Windows in the future as well. But now it's working very well. It is very resilient. What, what that mean is that uh, you lose the internet, you unplug and replug it. It's, well, it's very stable, your internet crash, you just reload the page and you can connect again, it never crashed. It's been there for three weeks and it never crashed. But there's not a lot of propagation on HF right now. So, you know, it's uh, just spoil a little bit the fun, but it's working very, 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 very well. And it's very stable, as I mentioned. Don't be surprised if you don't, you don't have any reception if you connect onto the server. Um, because sometimes I switch to my radio and I'm, I'm, I'm using my antenna for operation. So don't be surprised, just try it later on. And please keep in mind that maybe people are waiting to try it. So if you can try it for five, 10 minutes at a time, that will be great. So uh, get a chance to people to try it more and more uh, in the future, that will be cool. And uh, as I mentioned, look at the address below. Try it, let me know what you think, go in the comments and uh, 73 for now. Catch you some other time.